Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'll talk about how to fill the publication portion of your ERAS application, including peer-reviewed articles, oral and poster presentations. So let's get started. After you go into your ERAS application, go to your dashboard and click on publications. This screen will appear in which you can click on add entry and you'll be allowed to choose from the publication type. If you click on the drop down list, several options will appear. We'll go into each one of these, but let's start with the peer reviewed journal articles or abstracts. If you click on that, you'll be asked to fill several boxes regarding the article you're referring to. So peer reviewed journal articles or abstracts refer to published work. It doesn't refer to submitted, impress, or accepted, which we'll discuss in the next uh, option. So here, this refers to published. And by published, we mean the article has received a volume and issue number with pages. So you'll be asked to enter the article title here, the author name, and there is a specific style that ERAS wants from the articles, which is the last name, comma, first initial, dot, middle initial, dot, comma, and the other authors. For example, John Paul Smith, it would be Smith, comma, J period, P period, comma, and you would list the rest of the authors. The publication name means the journal of the publication, and you would list here the name of the journal. The PMID is a number available in the in PubMed if you look your, your article. Volume, issue number, pages, we'll see that in an example now, and the month of the publication with the year. Let's go to see an example. So this is one of the articles I have, it's already published. If this is from PubMed, this is screen, a screenshot from PubMed. This is the journal of the publication. You can see the year here, the month. This is the volume. This is the issue here between parentheses, and these are the pages. So for if we go back, we would fill the volume with 73, the issue with two, and the pages would include this number here. Here's the PMID if you want to include that. It's not mandatory to include that, but if you'd like to do that, it's available under the article name. And here are the authors if you want to include that, but make, it, make sure to include it in the ERAS form. Well, I want to mention something here that this was an article that I showed an example for. Sometimes the abstracts get published in a journal and just a background for those who are not familiar with what an abstract means, when you submit a work, research work to a conference, that conference reviews usually all the abstracts that get uh, submitted and they choose few to get presented at that meeting or conference for poster or oral presentation. These abstracts, after they get presented, you can add them in the poster or presentation section, but sometimes conferences publish all or part of their abstracts in a journal, in the supplement of a journal. And in this situation, if, for example, you presented your work as an oral presentation, you'll add it under the oral presentation. But if the meeting published the work in a supplement journal, you can add the same work twice in your, C in your ERA CV because you presented the work and now the abstracts got published. But again, not all conferences do that. Sometimes the conference published part of the abstract, not all. So make sure when you receive the acceptance letter from the conference that this abstract will be published or not in a supplement of a journal. Another point that I wanna highlight here, this section includes online journals and online journals are different from online publications that we will discuss later. Some journals are available only online, but they go through the same peer review process as in print publications. So if your article has been assigned an issue number and a page number in an online journal, that still qualifies here for the peer reviewed journal articles. Online publications are something else, but online journals, which is a scientific journal that is only published online, it qualifies here. Another scenario for the online journals, sometimes a journal exists in print, but they publish some of their articles online, but it still qualifies here under peer reviewed journal articles. Let me give you an example of another publication I have. So Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, the journal here, it's an in-print journal, but they publish some of their articles online. And you can know that by this 
letter here E near the pages, which means it, the whole article was not published in the imprint journal. So when I looked at the imprint journal, the first page of the article was published in print, but they referred the reader for the online portion if they would like to know more about the article. So this article was not published fully in print, but it still qualifies under the peer reviewed journal articles. And in the pages here, you would include E and the pages that the article was published in. Let's go to the second option, which is peer reviewed journal articles, abstracts other than published. And if you click on the publication status here, you would see four options, submitted, provisional accepted, accepted and impress. That reflects the process that a paper goes in when you submit your article to a journal. So after you finish your work, you submit your article to a journal, the paper gets reviewed by reviewers, you receive back either an acceptance or revisions, and it, the paper gets re-evaluated by the editor or by the reviewers, and you receive more revisions, acceptance, or rejection. So if your paper is submitted, or you received revisions, but you haven't received the final acceptance letter, you would choose submitted. However, sometimes the journal sends an acceptance letter with minor modification to the paper. So you would see in the, in the response from the journal, they would tell you, your paper has been evaluated and it's accepted, but we would like you to make these minor revisions. In this situation, you might choose provisionally accepted. However, if the word accepted was not mentioned in the response from the journal, keep it under submitted. So if they ask you for even minor revisions and they mention in the response letter that this will re be re-evaluated by the reviewers or by the editor, in this situation, keep it under submitted. So submitted includes both submitted but haven't received revisions or submitted and have received revisions but final acceptance hasn't been finalized. Provisionally accepted, they have to state that clearly in the response letter that your paper is accepted, but we're still, we would like you to make minor changes to the paper. Accepted, you only choose that option if they, if the journal mentioned that your paper has been finally accepted, no more modifications are needed. So what's the difference between impress and acceptance and imprints and publication? Impress, if your article has not received an issue number or a volume. So sometimes a paper after it's accepted, it's published online, for example, and it's waiting to be assigned to an issue number or a volume number for it to be finally published in print or online. But this process, this period between being published online and the final publication is in press. So if your paper has been accepted but not published online ahead of print, it would be accepted. Once it's published ahead of print, but before the final publication of the, of the article, being assigned an issue number and a page number, it would be in press. After it's assigned to an issue number and a volume number, it would be published, which is the first category. Let me give you an example here. This is an article I recently had published. So after we have the paper, had the paper accepted, by a week or two, the journal published the paper online, but ahead of print. Because if you can see here, the difference between this paper and the prior one, let's go back to this one. Although this was published online with E, it has been assigned to a volume and issue number. But if you look at this paper here, it only has the date with the DOI. Because although this is available online, you can see it, you can read it, and it's published, it's published ahead of print, as you can see here and it hasn't been assigned to an issue number and a volume number. So in this situation, you should choose impress and include the same information, the title of the, of the work, the author's publication name, which means the journal of publication, and you choose the month and the year. One difference between this form here and the one prior is the volume, issue number, and pages, because again, the, the three, four categories here don't have a page and issue number. The third option is peer-reviewed book chapters, and these has to be published by the time you put them on your CV. Why? Because they ask you for publication information here. 
So each book is composed of multiple chapters and each chapter has some authors and all the chapters get reviewed by editors of the book. So you, after you choose a book chapter, you include the chapter title that you helped with or you wrote, the name of the book, the authors of the chapter, the editors of the book, the publisher, which is available in usually the first page of the book, the pages of the chapter you wrote, the country that the book was published in, state, city, and the year of publication. Scientific monographs are in-depth research of one issue or topic, usually by a qualified researcher in the field. So if you have this kind of research or publication, you would include the monograph title, the way it got published, volume, issue number, the authors, the editors, the publisher, and the year. Now moving on to peer-reviewed online publication. And again, this is different from peer-reviewed journals that are only available online. Let me give you some examples of peer-reviewed online publication. Up to date is an example of online peer-reviewed publication. Because if you wrote a section of up to date, it gets reviewed and then it gets published online. Stat Pearls is another example of online publication that is peer reviewed. So if you wrote any of these, you can include the title of the publication, the authors, the URL. So people who are reviewing your CV can access that publication and publication date. This is different from non peer reviewed online publications. Some websites can publish work or if you have, for example, viewpoints, and, but it doesn't get peer-reviewed like UpToDate or other online websites. And this would be the place where you put this kind of publication. It asks for the same information. I just wanted to mention something that I missed for the first category, the peer-reviewed journal articles. Peer-reviewed journal articles include the research article, the review articles, systematic reviews, case, reports, case series, correspondence, communications. So any work that has been peer reviewed would go under the first category, which is peer reviewed journal articles. If the work was peer reviewed or published in a peer reviewed journal. Other articles is an article that does not fit any of these categories. And for example, I published a research I did through the final year of my medical school in the university proceeding. That was not published online. It wasn't published in a peer-reviewed journal. So I put this type of research here under other articles, and you would include the title of the work, authors, publication name, where it get published, and the publication date. Now moving to a different type of research output, which is the presentations. Although these are under the publication, but they're kind of a different way of presenting your research. Or presentations is after you submit an abstract to a conference, you get invited to present your work on a podium in an oral presentation form. And the other form is the poster presentation where you have a poster and people pass by and ask questions about your research work. There is a very important point here to discuss, which is oral presentations are not presentation that you do as part of your rotation or elective, or for example, you presented an article during a journal club, that would not qualify as oral presentations. Oral presentations reflect presenting research work at a meeting. Even if it was your school research day, some schools have a research day each year, that would still qualify as oral presentation. Regional meetings, local meetings, national or international, but it does not qualify presentation that you do as part of your rotations or as I said, journal club. Another point uh, that I get asked about a lot is, am I supposed to include presentations that I wasn't the first author on or I was not the person who's presenting the work? And I think it's fair to include presentations that you did not present personally because you contributed to the work, you did some part of the research work and you deserve to receive credit for what you contributed. But you wanna make sure that people reviewing your CV know that you're not the person presenting. So they, if they wanna assess the ones that you presented only, they can know that. And the one that you did not present, they can have an idea of which one are the ones that you actually presented. And one way of doing that 
is the author order. If you are not the first author on the presentation, usually it means that you're not the person presenting the work. Another way is having an asterisk next to the presenter. And in this way, the people reading your CV can know that you're not the person presenting your work if there is no asterisk next to your name. So make sure that the author order reflects the actual author order on the abstract that was submitted. And I would include the presentations in the chronological order, similar to publications. So start from the most recent ones and go down the list. After you choose the oral presentation, choose the title of the presented work, the authors, and again, usually the first author is the presenter, and put the same author order that was submitted to the presentation. If you wanna highlight more who is presenting, you can, as I said, add an asterisk next to the presenter name. In which meeting was this presented? The country of the meeting, city, month, and year, in which the abstract has been presented. You can add presentations that has not been presented yet, but has been accepted. Here, you cannot add submitted abstracts. You can only include abstracts that have either been presented or accepted for presentation. So if you put a date in the future, they know that this work has been accepted, but it hasn't been presented yet. The same information apply for poster presentations and you'd include the title, the presenters, the meeting name, the country, city, month, and year. Now, if you have some research work that hasn't been submitted, where would you put that? So sometimes researchers might spend a year or two working on a big randomized clinical trial or basic science research, and this kind of research take a long time. And by the time you submit your application, you might not have the paper submitted. So another way of including that is under the research experience. So if you go to your experience and choose experience type research experience, you can fill this information, the organization, position, supervisor, country, city, how much time were you working for that position. And here in the description, you can include one major project or two major projects that you've been working on that have not been submitted. But don't include every single project that you're working on that hasn't been submitted. Include only the major ones to convey to the people evaluating your CV that you have some major research work that is still ongoing, but hasn't been finalized. And you can include the dates of your research experience. That brings us to the end of our video today. I hope the information presented will help you to fill your publication portion of your ERAS application. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Malki Asad. Thank you everyone for watching and see you in future videos.